Okay, so I've got a package in from Amazon. What's in this package? Well, as you've seen the title of this video, you probably already know what's in this package. So what I've got here is the cheapest external NVMe enclosure that I could get off of Amazon. This thing should allow me to take this WD Black SSD, uh, the label's peeled off of it, I promise you this is a WD Black, and combine it with this to go ahead and have a really useful solution for transferring files back and forth, working with an external drive that is snappy fast. Let's go ahead and dive into putting this thing together, check out what this thing's like, and see how it works and how it's gonna work for my workflow that I'm dealing with, and I'll explain as we go. So once you pop the box open, what you get is the aluminum enclosure itself. It's a pretty straightforward little setup here. Of course, it's got the plastic end that has your USB Type-C port on it. You also get a Type-A to Type-C cable, and you get a Type-C to Type-C cable, depending on what your I.O. for your computer is. There's also a little bag of hardware here. The hardware is a couple of little standoffs and screws. One of the screws goes into the back of the actual enclosure to hold the sled that holds the drive in, in place. And then the other one's for actually mounting your drive into the enclosure. And last but most certainly not least, you actually get a 3M thermal pad. This goes onto your drive, so when it goes in here, it actually function, the aluminum case can function as a heat sink for the drive. As I said, I'm installing a WD Black SSD 256 gig NVMe drive. This is not M SATA. I can find cheaper M SATA enclosures, but this is the cheapest NVMe enclosure I've been able to find so far. Let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. What we are going to need to do so, it does not include a screwdriver. We're gonna need a precision Phillips head screwdriver to go ahead and assemble this because these are small screws. Since there's no retainer screw currently in here, all we gotta do is grab the plastic portion, hold on to the aluminum, and slide out the sled that allows you to install the drive. Now you can see here the sled is actually kind of spring-loaded, and that will actually push the drive against the housing itself to function as a heat sink. Now, as you can see here, I've got the drive, but there's no standoff in there. I need to take the standoff. I actually need to insert the groove of the standoff into the end of the SSD and then push it all down against the sled. It's very strange. Then I need to come from the back side with the screw and screw the standoff down to the sled. This is the only way I can figure out to do this. Install a screw from the back side with this all kind of assembled together. It's a little fiddly and a little finicky, but it should work just fine once it's all assembled and inside of the drive. Wanna make sure that the screw on the back side of the sled down here at the bottom is lined up with this side of the enclosure. That's where the retainer screw is for it. Since like I said, this is spring-loaded, as I insert this, I gotta push down on the drive. Really gotta do so so that the thermal pad doesn't get stripped off of the drive. It's together and now the thermal pad is pushing pressure on this and it's actually kind of holding the whole thing together too. Last but not least, I need to install a screw into this hole here that goes into the sled and keeps it from pulling out. So I got the drive in this enclosure, took it up to the USB-C port on my laptop. I ran Crystal Disk Mark on it a few times to test it out and see where we're at. I've got a screen capture for you here. This thing came in at 844 megabyte per second read speed and a 697 write speed. That's really respectable. That's probably as good, if not better, than most of the commercially available external SSDs you're gonna find on the market right now, maybe short of like a Thunderbolt version. But that said, this is an older WD Black drive from like 2017, but it's still rated at a 2000 megabyte per second read speed. So I'm definitely losing something through this enclosure. It's not getting the full potential out of the drive. Now I did test out the USB A to C cable that came with this drive to see if that was gonna make any difference. I plugged it into a Gen 3.1 port, or uh, it's changed, is that Gen 3.2 now I think? Uh, it, one of the fast ports on my computer. It should be theoretically the same speed as a USB C port. Plugged that into that on my laptop here, ran Crystal Disk Mark, and I came in at like half the read speed and about 50% the write speed. I guess that this A port is actually a Gen 3, not a Gen 3.1. So you are actually losing some speed by using this cable versus the USB-C cable. 
So that's it for this drive, folks. I mean, it's a fully functional drive. It's gonna be a lot faster than the WD Passport drives I was using currently to send footage to the editor who's working on this mini documentary series I've been working on. That was the main point of this for me, is I can put a couple of these together pretty affordably, cheaper than I can buy, commercially available external enclosure SSDs, and have good, reliable storage. I think I'm gonna pick up a couple more of these. There's a few hassles in there. The instructions weren't nearly as clear as I'd like. The speed of them, I was hoping for a little bit more, but it's still quite a usable speed. All right, folks, I'm gonna throw a link in the description down below to this enclosure so you could try it out for yourself if you're interested. For the price of it and the price of what I can get for SSDs nowadays, I think it's worth it. And I'm probably gonna pick a couple more of them up so I have a few to rotate out, sending out to other people, have them just to store things on. I have a NAS backup server that I put all my footage on, but it'd be nice to be able to use this to transfer footage from my laptop to my workstation, things like that. I, I could see using this definitely in the future. So go ahead and drop a video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of this drive? What do you think of this video? Did I miss something you thought I should test out with this? Let me know in the comments down below. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and keep up to date with all the tech and camera and weird stuff that I put on this channel. I'm not on a regular schedule, but subscribe anyway to see when those videos go up. Thanks for coming around, folks.